We then go down to Asa. Asa was 40, uh, uh, ruled Judah 41 years. Now, he was regarded as a good king. He was, he was good because he expelled the... Um, he expelled the male shrine prostitutes, rid the land of idols. He did not remove the high places, but he deposed his idolatrous grandmother, who had become the queen mother. Uh, and he commanded Judah to seek the Lord. So his heart was toward the Lord. His tensions were to the Lord. And he was met, met with success in uh, fighting the, the Libyans and the Cushites. He shot the Lord, and he was victorious. So he waited on the Lord as he entered into battle, and he tried to, uh, to take away the temptations of the people, but he did not go so far as to take away the high places. In the 36th year of his reign, uh, Asa paid uh, Ben-Hadal, king of Iran, Aram, uh, money to, uh, to war against Israel on his behalf. And God was not pleased because he sought the Lord and was successful against the Libyans and the Cushites, but yet when it come to fighting against uh, the Israelites, he joined the king of Aram. And so... Asa uh, responded to the seer that gave him this prophecy by putting this seer in prison. He also uh, brutally oppressed many people at that time. So here you have a good king not finishing well. He's in the final stages of his kingship, and he is not seeking the Lord. In fact, in the 39th year of his reign, he developed a disease of his feet, severe disease of his feet. And he did not seek the Lord. He only sought the doctors. So good kings can slip on the, the stage of getting off the stage. Um, uh, Jehoshaphat, <clears throat> again, a good king. He was 35 when he began his kingship, and he reigned for 25 years. He did right in the sight of God. He didn't stray uh, from the Lord. He rid uh, the land of, of idols and uh, shrine prostitutes, but he did not take away the high places. Before I go any further, let me talk a little bit about the high places. The high places had a certain legitimacy in as much as... Um, before the temple was built, there needed to be a place to uh, sacrifice to the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So there were shrines available to do that in the high places. They happened to be put there because other shrines were there to other gods and other idols. And so to go to these shrines was to become exposed to uh, false gods in idols, which was they're expressly forbidden from doing. What were the first two commandments of the Decalogue? Love the Lord your God and have no idols before him. Two, right, right up front. So what happened is that people risked apostasy by going up to the high places. And they would justify this by saying, well, I'm going to sacrifice to Lord God Almighty, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but in, they might take a little sacrifice along to the God of Baal or whomever. So it was a compromised situation. And always under, um, always under a certain amount of, of question whether uh, they should go there or not. But very, very few of the kings ever touched the high places. It was probably politically difficult for them to do. Uh, <clears throat> so anyway, Je Jehoshaphat aligned himself with Ahab, the evil king of Israel, who had married Jezebel. And um, he went into battle with Ahab. 
And somehow Ahab talked him into wearing his royal garments to set, be a decoy. Now, you kind of wonder at this Jehoshaphat, how gullible can you get? Uh, but nonetheless, he did that, and God miraculously allowed him to survive that incident. Um, so he was rebuked by the prophets, and he repented. And he got his chance to show his metal once again, because a huge army of the Moabites showed up at surrounding Jerusalem. And he set his heart on seeking the Lord. And he prayed one of the most magnificent, heartfelt, wrenching prayers you're ever going to read. Uh, it's in 1 Kings 22. I'm not going to go there because I want to kind of whisk through these quickly. Because I want to have some audience participation. I want you to start thinking for me, uh, in modern terms, what are our high places? In modern terms, where are our idols? Because if we can't make personal application of this and say, gee, you know... Uh, for me to compromise my relationship with God at the expense of public approval, uh, how is that different from these other guys that I condemn? And uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer said, there isn't anything that we condemn in others that doesn't exist to some degree in ourselves. <clears throat> So he set his heart on seeking the Lord, and God delivered him miraculously. There's a book by Ron Mel entitled, The Prayer That Moves Heaven. And it's about this prayer of, uh, of Jehoshaphat. I would get the book if I were you. It's really great. Now, you would think that, uh, that Jehoshaphat would have learned his lesson having aligned himself with Ahab, he further aligned himself with Ahab's successor, Ahaziah, and they built ships, and they were going to do trading. And God did not approve, so the ships somehow all got wrecked. Uh, <clears throat> so if you're going to seek the Lord, you've got to be ready for the consequences of disobeying him. Uh, Jeroam was the next king, a son of, uh, of Jehoshaphat. And he indeed was evil. I think he may even be down a little further on the evil list. Um, no, he's Jahaz. Jo Jehoram. He's just bad. Okay. <laughs> <I'd> be bad. <laughs> he put his brothers to death. Jehoshaphat left his children well. He gave them cities. He set them up. Well, and as soon as he died, Jehoram killed his brothers. And he rebuilt the high places. He led Judah astray into idolatry and apostasy. Elijah sent him a letter condemning his behavior and prophesied that he would lose everything he had he would develop a wasting disease of the bowels, and his bowels would eventually come out. And it did, and he died to no one's regret. That's what the Bible says. How would you like that on your tombstone? <laughs> he or she died to no one's regret. That was Jehoram. He died to no one's regret. Um, now we have us, Ahaziah. At the age of 22, he ruled one year. He walked in the ways of Ahab. Indeed, he was related to Ahab, for his mother was the granddaughter of Omri, who happens to be on the list of kings as extra bad. 